Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. I'm here with my co-host, Willie, who, of course, anytime he hears me in here talking, um, he has to be a part of whatever I'm doing. This is a podcast about my crafting, which is knitting, crocheting, sewing, quilting, basket making, jewelry making. I like to do all the crafts. Also, I am a a full professor, tenured full professor of physics and astronomy at a local four-year university, so I like to talk about science topics as well. And I'm also a certified Arkansas Master Naturalist, so I like to talk about natural history things about the state that I live in here in Arkansas. And finally, I am a farmer. I live on my family farm that my family has lived on this land for a century, and I am the third generation to own this farm. And I raise uh, grass-fed beef cattle. I raise horses. I also have show-quality rabbits and poultry. And I'm also a home or a haven, if you want to call it that, to some rescued donkeys and many horses and a miniature mule who thinks she rules a roost. And also, as you can tell by my sweet co-host here, I am fur kid mom to 14 dogs, five indoor cats, and an undetermined number of outside cats. So um, if you want to hear more about my uh, life, my crazy life here on the Funny Farm and as a physics professor and also a crafter, please stick around for episode number Number nine of Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. Okay, guys, if you're looking for me on the internet, a place the places you can find me are my farm page and YouTube account is the same name. It's both Buckthorn Farms, both on YouTube and then also Buckthorn Farms on Facebook. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Doc Firewoman. And then you can also find the Ravelry group for this podcast in Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. And there you can find out about our charity make-along. I am hosting a charity make-along that is running until July the 2nd, which happens to be my birthday. And we are making things, and it can be any craft. It can be sewing, knitting, crocheting quilting i don't care we just want to do some good in this world and charity is a pretty broad uh, spectrum of things um as i had mentioned in the past um we're doing we're having things everything from um someone is making cat cage comforters for the local animal rescue in their area people are crocheting little hats and baby blankets for neonatal units uh, there is someone making hats and scarves for children who age out of the foster care system. Um, I am working on some lap quilts, uh, and I have dug them out of the pile of doom over here <laughs> uh, to start working on those for our local hospice house. Uh, pretty much, there's this, the door is wide open. If you can think of a need, fill it. I mean, that's kind of my philosophy on that. You know, do some good in the world. Uh, as I mentioned, the um, State Farm following uh, video, but there's also another video from a Thai life insurance company. And the, there's several of these um, clips. It's basically a commercial for their product, but um, it's a really good commercial. And it's very touching, and it's a, a young man, and, and you see him walking through life. And he tries to help people in little ways. And um, sort of the, the symbolic theme of this is there's a plant that's dead and there's a downspout draining water. So every day he moves the plant, or it appears to be dead, I guess. He moves the plant under the water and little by little the plant comes back to life and, and blooms. And so it's kind of a metaphor for what he does in his life. And I think it's really touching. So I will link that as well as all my contact information and how you can get to our Ravelry group in the um in the information box below. So I'm glad that you're here. I hope that you enjoy what you hear. And um, if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. It tickles me to know that people are, are repeat viewers. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to uh, the Funny Farm. <laughs> so anyway, let's get started with some things that I have actually finished this week. Okay, guys, the first thing that I got finished uh, this week was an entry for Yolanda at the Happy Knits podcast. She was having a spring fling, and I had big plans that I was going to... Um I was going to finish a shawl in time for the deadline on this, but it didn't happen. You know, dream big, right? Dream, go big or go home. 
Um, my shirt is looking very bizarre today. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. You can tell I've been outside working, I guess. That's what it is. But anyway, um, the re only requirement was it had to remind you to spring in some way, and you had to use 50 grams of yarn, a minimum of 50 grams of yarn. So on Easter Sunday, Prince and Peddler, uh, let me show you their logo here. Prince and Peddler had a free pattern. It was Sai's birthday, and it was also um, Easter Sunday. So they issued a free pattern, and it is still free. It's available on Ravelry. And I am so far the only project, or I was when I checked yesterday, the only project on Ravelry for this. Now, what I did was, because I had to make, uh, had to meet the requirements for 50 grams of yarn, instead of making one bunny, I made Watership Down. <laughs> So I made four bunnies. I ran out of this rainbow yarn. So this one has a, a blue booty. Okay, and then I made, and he's got blue ears, and then this one is all blue. And what you see here is how differently I crochet with different yarns, but also even with the same yarn on different days. Because if you look, you know, I thought I read the pattern the same way, but apparently not, okay? So anyway, so what you're seeing here is evidence of day, how you're feeling that day does matter to how you crochet. But anyway, so I finished these guys. They were over 75 grams by the time I weighed them. So I know I came in with at least 50 grams of yarn, so I entered those in the Spring Fling Make Along for the Happy Knits podcast. And you should go check her out. She has some really great prizes usually. Uh, over there. Plus, she has some really great tutorials on sock knitting that have really been very helpful uh, to me as a as a baby sock knitter. <laughs> or not of baby socks, but a baby in my development as sock knitting. Anyway, go check her out because she's got some really good tutorials. So there's my first, whoops, a little issue there. Man down, man down. Okay, there's my first FO, my bunnies. Okay, so we'll put those guys up. All right, my next FO you remember I was talking about my friend Sasha's sister's boyfriend saw her true north toque and wanted a hat. And he said he just wanted it to be nice and bulky and warm and cozy and gray. So I went and bought some bulky gray yarn and I made him a hat. Now, this is the one that I had done last time and I had done double crochet, but I had used a size N hook on it. So I frogged it all back and I started again. Except this time, I used a bigger hook. I used a, a size P, or a P slash Q size hook is what it was, okay? So that made a much more flexible, <laughs> lots of ends, made a much more flexible fabric, okay? It's just kind of my little hat recipe. It's lots of double crochets, and then I do a front post, back post double crochet to do this sort of ribbed sort of a faux ribbed brim here, okay? But I think that'll be a nice beanie. It'll be nice and warm, okay? And the fabric is much more flexible since I went up a hook size, so that really helped that. So that's just my made-up hat recipe um, for his, I got obviously got to weave in my ends. I literally finished this uh, this morning while I was waiting on my planetarium group to show up. So um, weave those ends in and get those to her. I just got a message from her. One of our basket kits just came in the mail, so I'll I will see her actually Friday night for the OWLS program on um, edible wild plants, so I'm going to take that to her then. Okay, so I got that finished. Okay, the next thing I got finished, and I'm very proud of myself because a lot of times I don't make for myself, but this is my True North toque. You saw Sasha's that I had started. Actually, you didn't see it with the pom-pom, but uh, I put a brown pom-pom on hers, and I put a gray pom-pom with black tips on mine, okay? So this is my True North toque, okay? This is a pattern by M by M Knitwear. It is a pay for pattern on Ravelry. It's also available on her Etsy shop, all right? It is a nice um, sort of get your feet wet color work hat, okay? Because the plaid is color work. So you can see my floats there. They're not perfect, but who cares? They worked out just fine. Now, I did modify this pattern. It's on my Ravelry project page. Uh, when I made hers and I tried it on myself, I didn't feel like it was too snug. The circumference was too snug. So, I, um, what I did was I increased the stitch count on the brim, all right? I increased the stitch count on the brim, and then um, I also added another repeat on the pattern to make it a little bit taller. It was a little too more, much like a, 
a skull cap for my liking. So, um, yeah. So I modified the pattern a little bit to make it fit me a little bit better. And um, then the pom-pom was, there was a pom-pom on the sample in the picture. But I think it fits really well now. I feel, feel good about it. It's just Lion Brand Thick and Quick yarn. Really super. Oh, and that other yarn was also a thick, chunky, I think it was a store yarn. Uh, just a thick yarn, acrylic yarn. This one's acrylic, so I can throw it in the washing machine. Of course, I fixed it where I could take my pom-pom off. I just tied it on with the button. So I can take my pom-pom off if I ever need to wash this for any reason. And it probably will need to be washed because that's just, that's just part of my life. I just can't do anything without getting right in amongst it and getting stuff all over me. Okay, the last thing that I finished was, and I was really proud of myself, um, I finished my Tangram wrap. This is a was a kit that I purchased from Lion Brand Yarns, but I believe you can also buy the pattern off of her um, Ravelry page. It's her uh, Ravelry name is One Dog Wolf, and it is a crocheted rectangular wrap. So you've got geometric geometric patterns on it. Okay, um, it was a kit from Lion Brand with um, a yarn called Jeans. So all these different yarn colorways are supposed to be reminiscent of different colors of blue jeans, okay? So it's a nice rectangular wrap. I think it's pretty versatile, okay? It's obviously way too hot to wear it now, but I'm really tickled that I got finished with it. And part of the reason is that it only has five projects, and I think it's a really nice beginner project. Um, gauges, you got to watch your gauge though, because you I crochet differently on different days, and I was starting to get some creep <laughs> in my size, so I fixed that, um, and, and that's why I lost at Yarn Chicken, honestly, because once I got back on gauge, I didn't have any more problems, so I have some extra yarn that I ordered that I won't need now, but that's okay. I like the colors, and I can use it for a hat or something like that, um, but anyway, the reason I'm I'm glad that this is done is the Yarn Hoarder podcast, Amber at the Yarn Hoarder, is having a, a make-along called the Unsung Heroes make-along, where if you go online on Ravelry and the project has less than 30 projects on Ravelry, it qualifies to enter, and this one only, with mine, has five, which is a shame because it's a really nice, it would be a great gift project to make for somebody, okay? And uh, it was super simple. So that is the Tangram Wrap by One Dog Wolf. And I'm going to enter that. That was what I was going to put in the Treehouse Knits podcast um, kit along. But I lost at Yarn Chicken, so I didn't make it. But now I can use it in the Yarn Hoarder podcast's um, Unsung Heroes make-along. So I guess it all works out. Okay, so that is all of my FOs this week. So I'll come back and show you what I'm working on. Okay, so some of the things that I've been working on uh, are here. They are, I'm gonna start with the test crochet that I'm doing for my friend Maka. They had written a pattern called the Sensitivity Socks and they are gonna release it as soon as they get some information back from the testers, okay? So this is by Maka Makes Things, a friend of mine from Oklahoma that I've known for years and years. And they have sensitivity issues on their feet. So they wrote a pattern that takes care of some of the uh, issues and I am test crocheting this with um, Red Heart Heart and Soul yarn. It's just a rainbow. I think it's called Jelly Beans is the colorway. And I'm just now starting to do uh, the foot portion, the arch portion. Okay, so this is as far as I've gotten. Now, so far, the only thing I'm not sure about is these are fairly snug on me, so I don't know if blocking will help that. Um, the way the pat, I, I'm following the pattern as written, so it may just be that there needs to be some size grading happening. But uh, you crochet up, and then there's going to be an interesting way to put the heel in. So I'm interested to get to that part to see if the the pattern seems to make sense. Just reading it, but we'll see how I feel about when I get to it. So uh, I've been making notes on the pattern to give Maka some feedback for their purposes. 
But anyway, so yeah, so that is the Sensitivity Socks by Maka Makes Things, and that is a test crochet that I'm doing. And once that pattern is available for purchase, um, I will let y'all know. And the nice thing about it is it's kind of customizable in terms of the height and stuff. So that's the first thing that I'm working on, and that is in my little Humane Society bag from Have a Heart Humane Society with Kitty Cat on it. So we'll put that up. Okay. Um, the next thing that I'm working on, and I, I don't have a lot to show on this, but I did work on it. I took it to graduation with me <laughs> and sat at graduation. Um, and I'm going to talk more about graduation in a little bit, but um, I figured, well, I might as well keep my hands busy while I'm sitting there. So this is the Sheep Love hat, and I had that pattern out here somewhere to show. There it is. All right. The Sheep Love hat. This is a pattern on Ravelry, and I believe it is a free pattern, but I don't remember. Um, so, I cast on the medium size hat for myself, all right, and I figured it would be a good sort of next step up color work hat. Um, so, all I've done is make the brim or working on the brim, okay? So, I've got maybe three quarters of an inch of ribbing and I've got to come up, I got to do about twice that much. Um, you know, so I'm just making this in Cloudborn Highland DK that I ordered, I think from Craftsy. Um, so yeah, so I'm just that far on that, but, um, you know, that's kind of my throw it in the bag mindless project right now because it's just ribbing. But when we get to the color work part, um, I'm going to have to pay a little bit more attention, so, but I'm excited to learn to do some color work. You know, you, that seems to be the hot thing right now, all these beautiful color work sweaters, and you see all these people just, people are a lot faster knitters than I am. I'm just not going to even lie and tell you that I'm a fast knitter, because I am just not, but I enjoy the process, and that's really what this works. And this little bag, <laughs> this is just a little cosmetic tote that I picked up at a big box store, but I like the little animals on it. I thought it was awfully cute. So, can't go wrong with some woodland animals, right? Okay, um, the next thing that I'm working on, well, <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to finish this, but I'm going to try. Uh, it's been released. The reveal has been done. So, this is the Impressionist Shawl by Helen Stewart of the Curious Handmade Podcast. It is a beautiful, beautiful shawl. It is like the state of Tennessee. It is 15 minutes wide and 15 hours long. Um, there's going to be four, 500 and something stitches on the needles at the end, I think, 534 or so. Um, so, yeah, I'm a, about halfway, which is I'm kind of right in here on it, okay? Um, I did work on it a little bit. It takes me a bit to get through these rows so it takes me a little while to get through them but I did work on it a little bit um, and I am gonna um, I'm gonna make it a priority this week after I get through the section on this other one that I'm working on and I'm, and I'm actually making really good progress on it so I should be able to finish it tonight um, but anyway so this is where I'm at I'm in the lace section okay my colorways I've said it a million times so I'm not gonna go through it again um, you know, these are not my color comfort zone, but I think it will look nice once it's done. You know, that's the good thing about, to the, I've gotten to the point where I've let my hair go its natural color, which is silver. <laughs> I can wear a lot of different stuff. So, um, I think it's going to be really pretty when it's done. Um, I'm excited to incorporate more of this dark color because this is the one that I'm, I really, really like. So, I'm ex excited to get to that portion of the, of the shawl. And see how that works up so anyway um this is going to be priority after i get through the section on this other one that i'm working on and i'm you know everybody else is done yes i know i know i am behind but oh well <laughs> i work at my own pace you know tortoise in the hair and i'm definitely the tortoise <laughs> but that's all right because you know even the tortoise won eventually okay so got that one now what i'm working on right now is another, another knit along you know i got suckered in by the little picture this is the mother's gift mcal a mother's gift mcal by amy meeks and uh debbie reese 
And I don't know if there's a Ravelry group for this one or not. I know they're doing it with a hashtag on Instagram. I need to, to verify that, but I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, so I'm doing this one, and, and I'll be honest with you, that picture is what persuaded <laughs> persuaded me to do it <laughs> i'm a sucker for stuff like that but anyway um so if you're doing this one and you don't want to be spoiled you need to to um look away uh, i'm not going to talk a whole lot about the construction i'm just going to show it and talk about my yarn so you need to look away if you're doing this one um okay so here are my two yarns that i'm using this is um expression fiber arts uh, Polar Bear. This is their 50% Merino, 50% Silk. And then this is Primrose Yarn Company Adelaide Base, which is 75-25 Merino Nylon. And this is um, Star Lord is the colorway there. And you can kind of see there's a little pop of that blue in there. Okay. So that, and, and the nice thing about this is this was stash yarn. So Julia on the Happy Knitting podcast out of Germany is doing the summer stash down of 2018 and so if you knit from stash you can enter your object and so I, I only started building a stash about eight months ago or six months ago so uh, even though I haven't had these very long they are technically part of my stash because this is one of the first nice yarns that I bought um, so and then I bought this on the day of the little dog sad story that I told a couple a few podcasts ago um, so these are technically stashed, so they do qualify. So here is what I've got done. I am about probably halfway through clue one, and I just started it today. So it is zipping along fairly quickly. Um, yeah, so it's going to be like that. All right, so I've just started working in this section with my second color. Yeah. And my little progress keeper is really cute. It's from a uh, graphics design place. It's supposed to be a nebula. I don't know how well you can see that. It's a it's a so it's a a, a, a emission nebula. It's where stars are forming. It's a star forming region. Okay, and that and that's called the Fox Fur Nebula, according to the picture. I don't know. I need to look that up and see if that's a real thing. And I've got that in my Silver Shed USA Fox bag. So it kind of all works together. Lots of animal theme going on here. With the polar bear yarn and the um, and the um, fox fur nebula progress keeper. So anyway, so that's how far I've done today, and I'm going to work on that this evening when I get through recording. Okay, so uh, so far so good. Yeah, all right. So maybe I can keep up with this one. We'll see. <laughs> oh, and I'm knitting those on um, high 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 needles. Because I bought a set of chow goo needles to do these on. Had them in my car. Put them in my bag. Don't know where they are. I suspect they're in my car somewhere, which I need to clean out really bad and vacuum all the feed and everything out of it. I'll find them eventually. <laughs> anyway, so that is all of my works in progress for this week. So uh, let's come back and I'll talk a little bit about my future crafting. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some future crafting. Um, I showed the yarn last week uh, in the skein, and I have got it um, caked up now. Knitting Expat's new Sock Club socks. I need to start on these fairly soon. Uh, these are called the Vagary socks. Okay, and they are the third installment in the Wanderlust Sock Club. And I'm going to be making those out of uh, a sock blank. Now, uh, I purchased the sock blank from... Ballyhara Farms. Let me fix that where you can see it a little bit better. They are out of North Carolina. Okay. And the sock blank colorway was called Baby Elephant. All right. And so um, I went ahead and, and did it in two balls here. Okay. Two balls. All right. And um, I'm going to start on those this week I need to get started on those this week because I don't want to be rushed like I was last month trying to to finish up oh I forgot to mention my other bag uh, my impressionist knit along was in my uh, April 9 designs playful otters bag and she always it, the, I bought this bag because uh, on this particular set of bags she included a tape measure on the inside okay this bag 
uh, this sock sack, and which is a perfect size sock sack to stuff down in my purse, or I don't carry a purse, but my book bag, okay, or carry to graduation, which is what I did. This is one of uh, Tesla Knit's um, drawstring bags. It's a perfect sock size bag. It's got the little locking uh, mechanism on the drawstring, and then you can just carry it around your wrist. So if you want to walk and knit, or whatever. I know Riz and Knits is starting to knit along that's got to do with walking and knitting. And I'm like, can I do it on a horse? <laughs> See if we can get that figured out. I'll take some pictures if I do. But this is her Star Trek bag. And I love the original series Star Trek. I am a huge Star Trek fan. In fact, um, it was one of the reasons why I became a scientist, to be quite honest. And it's also, I used to write short stories about the characters on there too. So uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> but anyway, so um, I've got that in this bag. All right, and she donated four bags like this to the charity make along. So they are a perfect size and they're wonderful just to put a small project in and then just to put in your uh, book bag or your purse or your tote bag or whatever that you need to carry around. So Tesla Knits, go check her out. Okay, um, now I'm gonna keep talking about this till I actually start it, so I'll make myself start it. This is the Two Hearts Crochet Kraken Shawl, and I'm gonna be doing this with Kama Sutra Fiber Arts yarn. All right, uh, this is a crocheted shawl. It is uh, done with Pico crochet and double crochets, or I guess Pico is the combination of doubles and chains. So um, I really, 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 really wanna start this. So I'm gonna make myself a deal, and I'm gonna tell it in front of y'all, so it'll, I'll have to do it. I can't start this until I finish the Helen Stewart shawl. That's my deal with myself. So that will motivate me because I really want to make this. <laughs> so that will motivate me to get that done. So y'all heard it. I gotta, gotta follow through on it now. Okay, so, um, all right. Uh, <laughs> remember last week I talked about the patterns by Susan Caudino and she has, she has a deal where if you buy three of her patterns, you get a discount. Um, if you watch a Historian Knits podcast, um, Vanessa had made the Bon Bon Bunny twice for her daughter. Okay, that's one of, of Susan Claudino's patterns. Well, I was looking on her um, pattern page. I just got in the mood and want, I wanted to make uh, stuffies. I had seen a crocheting Whovian had made um, a crocheted little giraffe uh, to take with her to Maryland Sheep and Wool. And I think she also makes um, crocheted giraffes to donate to charity. Uh, I'm not sure which charity, but um, yeah. So I had got on there looking for a pattern, and she had a, she has a, um, this is a knitted giraffe pattern. I think he's knitted. I'm pretty sure he's knitted. Yeah. Okay. So there's Raleigh. So I got him. The, now, and I got Jinx also, which is a little kitty cat because I had already bought three patterns from her last week, but because when you read on Bonk's page, it says Bonk has a BFF named Buster, so while you're at it, you should knit Buster too. Now, how can I have Bonk and not let him have his buddy? So I went and bought Buster. That, I'm that kooky old lady. I went and bought Buster because you can't have Bonk without Buster. How could you have Bonk without Buster? So I had to go get them because they can't be separated in my mind. So now I just got to get them made, right? Okay. Willie, where are you going? You don't need up there. There is nothing up there for you. Okay. So that's pretty much all the... Oh, no. There's one more. All right. Resonates, who I really like her uh, patterns, and I also just enjoy following her on Instagram. I like her whole uh, vibe. I, I would love to be able to meet her someday. She has a new hat pattern out called the Crosshatch Hat, okay? And it is a pay-for pattern on uh, Ravelry. I don't want to show too much. Uh, but it is a really neat pattern on there um, of different um, crisscrosses. So let me see if I can find a more up-close pattern picture of it. Um, let's see if I can show this without showing you too much of the pattern. So let me fix that. Okay. 
I think it's going to be really pretty. It's a fingering weight hat, and I have some fingering weight yarn that I need to find a job for. Um, so I think this will be pretty. Uh, I don't know that she still has the discount anymore um, on the pattern when you purchased it, but you could go on her uh, site and see. Uh, it's Risenets, Risenets.com, or she also is on Ravelry. I purchased this through Ravelry. So I just really like her message and her persona. Plus, I like her patterns. So, um, yeah, go check that out. So, I definitely want to get this made up. And I've got the yarn in mind that I want to make with this. Or make this with, excuse me. Um, so, we'll see if I can get that done. Okay. All right. So, that's all of my sort of future crafting. So, that's really the end of my crafty content. Except for acquisitions, which are a mixed bag of um, yarniness and some non-yarny things. So, if you want to stick around for that, great. Oops. Oops sorry. I dropped you. <laughs> okay, Willie, we're having problems here tonight. So if you want to stick around for that, great. If you don't, I'll see you soon, and thanks for stopping by. So we're going to move on to acquisitions. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you a few acquisitions, and, and I haven't bought all these recently. Like I said earlier on, I do a lot of my craft su supply buying in the early spring, uh, because now that summer is here, I'm buying two things. I'm buying hay for my cattle and horses, and I'm buying canning jars <laughs> because people don't give them back. So um, anyway, so um, most of my craft supply buying has been, you know, done, and I've just been kind of saving things up to show. So I'm going to show you a few craft supplies, and I'm going to show you a few other things that I got. So I'm going to start with... Um, Expressions Fiber Arts always gets me with those World Wildlife Fund yarns. Uh, each month she does a yarn that is um, inspired by an endangered species and, um, and then donates the first few days it's available. She donates a portion of the proceeds to the World Wildlife Fund. So I wasn't going to buy it, and I'm, oh, but she just got my number. This, this April's yarn was called Red Wolf. Mexican red wolves. We used to have red wolves here in Arkansas. They were um, hunted to the point of extinction. And there's a lot of evidence that shows that if we still had the top predators like the red wolf, we would not be having the problems now that we're having with chronic wasting disease in the deer. Um, you know, that whole circle of life thing really is, you know, nature knows, now mama nature knows what she's doing. And then when we try to jack with what she's doing, it usually doesn't work out very well. Uh, but anyway, so this is another 50% uh, merino, 50% silk yarn. It's very, very soft. Um, don't know quite what I'm going to do with it yet. I don't think it would be something I would want to use for a hat uh, because I'm not sure that it would be... Um, firm enough for the stiff de definition like on that crosshatch hat but boy it's soft and beautiful so it'll make a beautiful shawl or a cowl so that's the first thing that I got and I haven't seen what hers um this month is yet I'm I'm afraid to look she just put out some uh, mini sets that are based on animals too and one of them is on the oscillated turkey and I have always wanted oscillated turkeys they are so gorgeous their colors are so gorgeous and that mini set is just beckoning to me and so we'll see Risenets has got that knit along she's starting in June that's supposed to take 12 minis so we'll see maybe I'll one of those will end up over this way sometime soon ha, we'll see sorry my phone keeps falling for some reason tonight um I had mentioned in, um back some time ago that Honeybee Knits who is Melissa out of Ohio was doing a special fundraising yarn she had a very good friend who um had esophageal cancer and during her friend's operation for the cancer, unfortunately, there were some pretty severe complications and her friend ended up passing away. And so, um, you know, a lot of times people don't know what they're going to do, but they got to do something. Okay, they got to do something. And um, so she, what she did was a special yarn in commemoration of her friend and she's donating the money to... Her friend's family to help cover expenses so all the money that she made went to her friend's family okay so we didn't know what it was going to look like and uh, I got my package the other day now what ended up happening as is very often the case that I have seen in the crafting community people came together 
And it wasn't just the yarn that you got. And the yarn was dirt cheap to begin with. I mean, I really would have paid more for this yarn. So here is the yarn. This is Honeybee Knits. Okay. And um, the colorway is called Sorire, I believe. Um, but anyway, it's a beautiful purple. And I don't know if she still has orders open for this or not. She has an Etsy shop. She's Honeybee Knits on Etsy. But it's a beautiful tonal purple yarn. It's a, I got the DK weight. She had a choice between fingering weight or DK. And this is 100% uh, Superwash Merino. Um, so I'm looking for a hat. I don't know if the Violet Waffles hat is a um, DK weight hat or not. I need to look. But uh, I'm looking for a special hat pattern uh, to make out of this. Now, the other thing that happened that I got in the bag, which I was totally surprised by. Um, oh, and here's her card. Here's her card. Honeybee Knits, Melissa Lukowski. And attached to this card, she had made some beautiful little progress keepers. Little ribbon progress keepers with the purple ribbon for esophageal cancer. Now, the purple ribbons obviously stand for a lot of things, but um, esophageal cancer is one of the things that they represent. I don't know if you can see that. Get out of it. Anyway, so little progress keepers. So um, there was that, which was a nice surprise. And then also, um, we got a coupon code for a sock, a free sock pattern on Ravelry, which I won't show that because it's got my code written on it. And then last but not least, um, George Ann from Stitching Plaza donated, oh, I'm sorry, the sock pattern was donated by Use Your Yarn, E-W-E-S, Your Yarn, I'll, I'll show that, oh, can you see that? They donated a free sock pattern to everybody, and it had a nice message on the top of it. Okay, that's the sock pattern. And then Stitching Plaza donated these adorable little Notions pouches. Aren't those just the sweetest thing? I was so shocked and amazed to receive all of these things um, from just that one thing. So, again, I am incredibly touched and, and amazed. I shouldn't say amazed, but I, it's wonderful to see so much compassion. You know, compassion is something that is sorely lacking in the world. I was having a conversation earlier. We have a, a Pokemon Go group on Facebook, and there's a person on there who's usually pretty crabby and cranky, and he got kind of testy with people today. Well, come to find out through an outside source, uh, his mother was on life support and actually passed away today. Um, which that would make anybody cranky. So that old adage of, you know, try to be as kind as possible. You never know what people are facing is really true. And I was starkly reminded of that today. So, um, yeah, compassion is erring on the side of compassion is always, always a good plan. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, well, some other things that I have, whoops, that I have gotten recently. I, I, volunteered at Resource Rendezvous, and I'll talk more about that in the science section, but um, one of the agencies that was there was uh, from the National uh, uh, Forest Forestry Service, and they were giving away patches uh, because this year is the 50th anniversary of the National Trail System. So many of you have probably hiked on one of our national trails. Here in Arkansas, we have the, the Ozark Highlands Trail, and we also have the Washita Trail. Ozark Highlands Trail is a beautiful, beautiful hike. It's, um, I'm not sure exactly how long it is, but uh, I've hiked portions of it. So there are a lot of people who come and do that as a through hike to kind of get, as they start ramping up to try to do one of the bigger trails, um, like the Appalachian Trail. There's actually four trails, and there's a really good podcast. It's called Stories from the Trail that talks about the different through hikers. And um, so this was a patch they gave us. So I loved that. Isn't that neat? So I'm going to put that in my um, Christmas ornaments because I actually have a travel-themed and Arkansas-themed Christmas tree, one of each. And, uh, I, and instead of buying Christmas ornaments, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll buy patches and use those or cool postcards and use those on my Christmas tree instead of a Christmas ornament. So I'm going to save this for that. 
Okay. Um. All right. So then, well, you know, couldn't be one of my podcasts without showing a pen or two, right? Now, this one may offend someone because it does have a not-so-nice word on it, as my grandma used to say, but the message of it is very apropos. Uh, this is... Um, 1606 designs i believe and they're on instagram and i like what this says do no harm but take no beep i guess you could say all right let me hold up something that'll make that maybe focus a little bit better okay it's a rose gold snake <laughs> and so i think that's a good reminder all right and then Hipster Pins was having a, um, a sale, and I purchased, I think if you got three pins, you got a discount. I can't remember exactly how that worked. But anyway, so I purchased three pins, and two of them are pretty staunch uh, rec reminders of my political point of view, you know, my whole liberal snowflake point of view. So, uh, you know, I'm not going not gonna to delve into it, just going to put it up. So I got the... Um, Love is Love, and the Nasty Woman pennant, oops, and then the Balloon Doggy. Gotta love that puppy dog, right? Everybody can agree on that puppy dogs are cute, I hope. If you can't, then I, I, I'm sorry for you. But anyway, so here's my three pins that I got from Hipster Pins. Okay, and they're also on Instagram. Um, so go check them out. All right, so let's see. Um, now... This is kind of, could have gone into future crafting. Um, I saw this on Etsy, and I can't quite decide what I want to do with it because it's really pretty. But it's a it's a printed it's a screen printed panel of a fox. I think I really want to make a bag out of this, like a very special project bag. But I frame it. I don't know. Isn't it pretty? I just want it where I can use it and see it. It's very beautiful. It's very detailed. It almost looks like it's airbrushed on there. It's really gorgeous. Okay, and I forgot to look up, that came from the UK, and I can't remember who I ordered it from. I should have looked that up, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so this is something I've had for quite a while, but if you crochet, and you do a lot of crocheting, and you find that your hand gets tired, you know, um, if you don't have an ergonomic hook, this is an interchangeable um, hook handle. And I already have one, but I like it so much I bought a second one. And I also got a second one because my dogs chewed on the first one a little bit. But anyway, the dogs kind of indoctrinated it a little bit. But it, it so relieved my hand tension when I was crocheting. Now, it does change your gauge a little bit. So, because um, you're not gripping the hook as tight. Uh, but it keeps my hands from getting tired. Especially when I'm uh, crocheting those small figures. Uh, it really does help. So, um, I highly recommend that if you crochet a lot. Okay, um, yeah, the last thing that I'm going to show is just a case. I got this on clearance sale, and it is a needle case, okay, by Knitter's Pride, all right, and it's one of those that has, I guess it's, you could put neat, regular needles in it, or interchangeable needles, or uh, even crochet hooks, and then there's pockets that you could put your cables in. And this was on clearance sale from $30, marked down to seven. So I'll use it for something. I don't know what, but I'm gonna, you couldn't pass that up for that price. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much all the acquisitions I'll share with you today. I don't wanna run on too long about stuff. So uh, yeah, so let's come back and talk a little bit about professor life and science. Okay, so um, Professor Life, we are done with the spring semester. My grades are turned in, and uh, we've had graduation, and uh, I've got a break. Uh, I am teaching intercession this sem this uh, May intercession, and so I've got to get my online class ready. But I'm going in twice a week right now to do planetarium shows. May is our really big uh, planetarium show month. Uh, in fact, we organize with the... Um, director of the Jewel Moore Nature Preserve on our campus, which is the last remnant of River Valley Prairie, and it's on our campus. 
and what school groups will usually do is they'll do a twofer. They'll do a planetarium show and a tour of the nature reserve. And so we coordinate with them to try to work that out. And he had the big ambition last year of putting 1,500 students through that, that tour. So we have started ramping up that. And I was supposed to do two shows today. Um, there was a large group that was going to split into two. And then there was a small group that we put in with the, the large group. But for some reason, the large group only had, instead of having 85 students come, they only had 55. I don't know if one class, you know, got in trouble and they couldn't come or whatever. But they were so excited. It was that age that's really, really great. One group was an elementary school GT group, and the other group was third and fourth graders. And they were so excited. They had such good questions at the end, and they were just a really a lot of fun. So I did that this morning. I'm going to go back on Thursday and do groups Again, I keep looking out the window because a while ago, my neighbor knocks on my door and there's a herd of cattle in my front yard. Not mine. Don't know whose they were. <laughs> and then about that time, 911 called and said, Miss Burris, this is 911. And as soon as I said that, I said, they're not my cows. Because what happens is if people see cows out and they call the sheriff's department, they know everybody's number along the road that has horses or cattle and they start calling them. And I don't know whose they were. I called the two neighbors that I could think of that we hadn't already eliminated. Um, and they weren't theirs. And so they wandered down the mountain. So hopefully they found their way home. Um, I don't know. That's just not something you see every day. You got one or two cows out. Yeah, you see that every now and then. But not a whole herd of them. And you're standing in your front yard. But anyway. Um, that's why I keep looking out the window to make sure they haven't come back. <laughs> But anyway, um, so the planetarium shows are going really, really good. Like I said, I'm going to go in early on Thursday. I've got two groups on Thursday also, but I'm going to go in early and work on my online class to get it all up and running for um, intercession. So now, last Saturday was our graduation, and I've been to a lot of graduations over the years, but it's always special when one of your own, one of your kids graduates. I had a student, a um, young man named Garrett, who has been very... Oh, hang on, Willie wants up here. Oh, come here. Um, who's been really instrumental in working on the service learning stuff since um, I started doing it. And he uh, graduated, and I got to meet his family. It's always a big deal. You know, he was very, very tickled. He's a very sweet young man. Um very much loves his parents and and um and so i was really proud to get to meet them and visit with them for a minute uh, and then saturday night there was a retirement party not really a retirement from the university but we have what's called the university um, residential colleges so every college like the college of natural science and math or the business college or the liberal and fine arts college or the honors college they all have a residential college which is a dorm that is dedicated to majors from that college and they have some classes offered in within the dorms within the dorm classrooms and so we have the stem college and we have a resident master and it's usually a faculty member and they're on a three-year uh, rotation so uh, one of the friends that I have at work she was retiring from being resident master of the STEM college. And so normally I don't go out. I, like I say, I don't like to leave the compound <laughs> very often. But I actually went and enjoyed myself. Had a really good time. Um, got to visit with them a little bit. Uh, so I peopled a lot on Saturday. I was really proud of myself for, for peopling. Um, so yeah, so we had that going on at work. Um, we also had, uh, as I had already mentioned a couple of um, episodes ago, we had our parent night for the kids at Adkins, and we fin it was the culmination of our um, year-long project about the five civilized tribes that my friend Sasha has been helping with, and we had written a grant proposal, and one of the things that we were going to do, since Lake Darnell was a region where a lot of the... Um, the five civilized tribes were evacuated through the river in that area we thought we would like to have it up there so we were able to rent the facility room up there the community room and we had it up there and it was great and i've made a short video of all of the activities and going on that i will insert at the end of this section so that you can watch it but the kids really pulled it off. I was really proud of them. They they did some great display boards. They put on some great activities for their families. And uh, it was just a great day. I was really proud of all that we had accomplished and everything. So, 
like I said, gifted in education is really important. Um, you have these kids that are hungry to do and know more. And I know that it's hard, you know, with, with time being tight and budgets being tight, but you know, it's really important that we feed these kids, you know, these ones that are wanting to go above and beyond in, in different subject areas. Feeding those kids is really, feeding their minds is really important because you never know what potential you're going to unlock when you spend a little bit of time with them, which is why I always am going to be an advocate for that. Um, on Friday, we had parent night on Thursday night, and then I turned right back around and went back to Lake Darnell uh, Friday morning for um, the Re Resource Rendezvous. Resource Rendezvous is a huge activity that my friend Sasha organizes for area fourth graders, and it's totally free to the fourth grade classes. They just have to get there, okay? And what they do is she um, has different stations set up, and they rotate through the stations, and they see all sorts of different um activities. There was Leave No Trace, there was the water cycle, there was a, a section on uh, boating safety, there was one about stream team, which is about, you know, surveying the macro invertebrates uh, in, a, in your local waterways, because, you know, volunteer groups are really the front lines on keeping the waterways clear. I actually am part of a stream team group through our middle school, and I am also uh, was also involved in one with the Master Naturalist. There's 100,000 miles of freshwater waterways in Arkansas, and there's no way governmental agencies can monitor all those. So different groups adopt these uh, waterways, and what they do is they do, we're supposed to do it four times a year, they do a physical assessment so they look at erosion and, and um, clarity of the water and motion of the water and all that then they do a chemistry assessment where you measure for things like nitrates and phosphates and you check the ph and all of that um, and they give you a kit or you write a grant to get a kit they don't give it to you but you write a grant to get a kit and then the last thing you do is you survey the microinvertebrates, all the little bugs and things that are in the, in the water. And there are certain ones of those that if the water is not very clean and pristine like it should be, they won't be there. So you're looking for these, these um, test species, if you want to call them that, or these, these red flag species. If they're absent, then that tells you that your water quality, if they should be there and they're absent, that tells you there's something going on with the water quality. So we uh, have done that with the kids at Adkins, and so there was a program about that um, also. And I'm trying to remember, there was one more, oh, trees, and oh, and prescribed fire. There was one about prescribed fire and one about just trees. Um, and also, it was really cool because there was some birds putting on a show. There was an orchard oriole flying around in the parking lot and then a Baltimore oriole. Uh, the orioles have been moving through this area and I've actually seen orioles in my yard, which is a first for me. Uh, they like the same sugar water solution that hummingbirds like, but they're really big and so they can actually damage your uh, hummingbird feeder. So what I've done is I bought an oriole feeder. Our local farmers co-op ordered some feeders and then I also have a flat area where I just slice up fruit and I put fruit out for them too. And they seem to really like that. They're such beautiful birds and I really want to encourage them uh, to come around if they will. So I'm also going to post a picture uh, after the video of the range of the Baltimore Oriole and of the Orchard Oriole. If you're interested, you'll learn a little bit of something about that. So that's pretty much been, been what's going on with um, the physics professor portion of my life, my volunteering and my educational stuff. So um, I'm going to put the video in of the Adkins kids and then also the, the pictures of the Oriole ranges for those of you who might be interested. And then we'll come back and talk about farm stuff.
Okay, guys, so farm life mainly has been just trying to get back into the groove now that the semester is over. Um, I have been making some things, which it's that time of year, canning season. Well, canning season really never ends because I can soup and uh, soup beans and make mustard and do all that stuff sort of in the wintertime. But in the spring and summertime, there is a bounty of stuff out there that you can um, make stuff out of. So one of the things that I have been trying to do more of is foraging. And you have to know a little bit about what you're doing. You know, you don't want to get something that's going to make you sick or make somebody else sick. But there's a lot of good resources out there. Uh, in fact, like as I mentioned, Friday night is our last owls class for this year. And a local teacher is coming to talk about wild edibles. And I've taken her classes before and they're usually really good. So um, what I've been doing is trying to make use of some of the things that Mother Nature provides. And so the first thing that I did is I foraged some dandelions and I have those uh, steeping right now. I'm going to make soap. I've made dandelion honey soap before. That's going to be my project for in the morning because it's one of those things that you can't start and then stop. You have to have a dedicated block of time. Uh, to do it. So um, it's a true lye soap. It does use lye, so therefore it has to cure for a period of time before you can actually use it because the lye can, if you don't let it cure, it can and can burn your skin. So I do have lye. I've got the, the solution is ready to go. I just have to get it all made in the morning. So I'm excited about that. It has honey from my bees in it also. So it's, it's nice to have something sort of local. Now some other things that I have made I don't need a drink. Oh, I got a fancier cup this week. I've got the, the Halloween cup. And here's the cool thing about this. You can see. <laughs> it lights up. So I like that one. So um, one of the things that I did is I gathered a bunch of red clover buds and white clover buds. And I've made jelly. Now, one thing I'm noticing about this is it didn't gel like I wanted it to. So I'm probably going to have to redo this. But um, they make jelly and they taste delicious, okay? When jelly doesn't gel, that's usually a sign that it doesn't have quite enough sugar content in it. So I'll have to go back and recook this and it'll, it'll set up just fine. So, uh, but what I did was I took my um, clover buds and I steeped them in water. Uh, I actually did it overnight like I'm making tea. So I used hot water, boiling water over them. And then you do add lemon juice to raise the acidity content because that helps keep it safe for you to eat. Um, but then other than that, it's just a basic jelly recipe. Okay. So isn't it a beautiful color? That's a beautiful gold. It's not really showing up as beautiful as it really is there. And then the red clover made a beautiful pinkish red jelly so didn't quite set up like i wanted it to so i'm probably going to have to go back and, and open it up and recook it but that's okay it happens um another thing that i've made was um i make my own deodorant and it took me a little while to find a recipe because you know i'm i don't glow they say women glow honey i sweat <laughs> i sweat because i'm out there in amongst all the dirt and the animals and everything else. So I reuse my um, deodorant container, my old deodorant containers, but I make a mixture of, um, I found it on Pinterest and I modified it a little bit. It's got my beeswax, it's got coconut oil, tea tree oil, lavender oil, um, turmeric, and baking soda in it. So, um, yeah, so I know everything that it's got in it. I just mix it up, and then while it's still in its liquid state, I just pour it and reuse my... It smells good. Pour it and reuse it in my uh, deodorant containers. So that way, I don't know, you know, I am a scientist, and I would like to see some scientific studies on the impact of aluminum on Alzheimer's. But then by the same token, I'm like, why do we need aluminum? in our deodorant anyway, if I can get by with without it. So, you know, so I just started making my own. Plus it's cheap to make. It's very inexpensive to make. I have all of the stuff already on hand, so why not, you know? Um, and it does work. I mean, that was my biggest concern is that it wouldn't work and I would smell like I sweat a lot. And uh, no, it, it works great. And so I've been very satisfied with how it works. Um, the next thing that I made, this is a lip balm, okay, that I made, and it is um, honey and peppermint oil and beeswax. 
and I put a little bit of geranium oil in it also because geranium is supposed to be good for the for the skin also. I want to eat it. <laughs> it tastes really good. You can taste the honey in it. And so I bought these little tubes actually at the beekeeping supply place when I went up there on Saturday to pick up my bees. Uh, you may have seen my little short video. If you haven't, I posted a little shorty video of bee pickup day and I got those installed and they seem to be very happy. I was noticing that they're out of food. So I'll probably put my jacket on and my veil on out here in, in a little bit and go out there and, and fill up the feeders uh, for them because I want them to stay. <laughs> So, uh, but now I'm back up to five hives, so I'm very excited about that. Um, right now on my kitchen stove in a mason jar, I have some of the, flant the plants that I foraged. Um, I walked down the road the other day, and because the county's getting ready to mow the roadsides and mow all the wildflowers down, so I went down the roadside and I, and I foraged. I got some calendula and some yarrow and some pinstamen or beard tongue. And something else that I need to look up, I don't know what it is, and some more red clover and some more dandelions. I walked down the road and, and picked all those up um, because I have, and then in my yard, I have narrow leaf plantain. And narrow leaf plantain and yarrow make a great first aid balm. In fact, one of the things you can do if you get bitten by fire ants or you get stung by something is you can take the leaf of the narrow leaf plantain and just kind of crush it up and rub it on that. It's also called ribwort. I believe I have a friend in the UK that says that they call it ribwort. It's kind of like the idea of using um, dock for nettle stings, I think it is. Um, so yeah, and we do have fire ants around here, unfortunately. So or it's good for bee stings. Also, there's something in the um, sap from the leaves that helps neutralize that that um, toxin. So got some of that steeping because I'm going to make some first aid salve. I've got some beehive beeswax from my beehives, and I've got that in coconut oil, and it's been steeping overnight, infusing. I guess is the right word in oil. It's been infusing, and I'm going to make some first aid balm. So yarrow is also supposed to be good for the skin. So I'm going to um, go gather some more yarrow blossoms, probably early in the morning, and uh, make some some face cream out of them also. So we'll see how that all works out. Uh, last but not least, I went ahead and distilled or decanted, I should say, my. Um, this is mint extract, okay, and I keep it in a dark jar just because it's volatile and I don't want the sunlight to affect it. Uh, this was simply, I took mint leaves, and I actually used a mixture of chocolate mint, peppermint, and spearmint leaves and packed them into a mason jar, into a quart jar, and then I covered them with vodka and I let them steep or infuse or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then I just strained those leaves out and got this. And then I also took my elderberry tincture, which I showed a couple of episodes ago, and bottled it up and with one of these dropper bottles. So I can use a dropper. I can use the dropper there. So this is just the elderberry tincture where I took the elderberries again, packed them in a mason jar. I think I used a, a pint and a half jar and covered it with vodka and let it infuse. So those are some things that you can make. Um, there are a lot of good resources out there on um, on foraging or on the uses of these things. Of course, with the internet, you can find anything. But I picked this up when we went to Toltec Mounds with the students. And I've, I've looked through it a little bit, but I'm going to try to make more use of... The way it's organized is it has just what the plant is and then some of the common uses. So, now obviously, you know, if you're having issues, you do need to consult with a physician. I'm not against Western medicine in any kind of way, but I'm also a big believer in the ounce of prevention beats a pound of cure. Uh, so anything that I can use that will help me, I'm all about that, but I'm not going to not take my, you know, high blood pressure medicine or something like that because I'm using something out of this book, but anything to help. And also, before you get too serious about these things, you do need to make sure that there's not side effects or, or negative effects that could affect you adversely. Um, you know, so just do your research. Do your research and, and be skeptical. It's always good to be skeptical. Um, I went to a workshop, actually, um, Sunday, and it was, there were several different workshops. It was called Spirit Quest, and there were several different workshops. One of the ones was about a local community organizer trying to work on uh, institutional racism. She has inherited her family home, 
and she wants to make it sort of a community center. And then one of the workshops was uh, led by a woman who is a student of the individual who wrote the four agreements. Well, the fifth agreement is, as she said, be skeptical. Be skeptical, but still, you know, still believe, you know, and, and have some, have some, but have some skepticism. So always, I always ask questions and I'm always skeptical, but I never rule anything out, you know, just because it's an old, one of the old ways doesn't mean it's not a good way. You know, not everything, you know, the latest and greatest and shiny and new is not always the best. And that's what I believe about teaching and learning and life, you know. So anyway, so I picked this book up. So I'm going to delve into it a little bit more um, in detail as I go. Okay. Um, I also have been working on my uh, garden and my yard. I planted a lot of herb plants. And I, like I said, I had foraged some wildflowers. So I replanted those. And then I also planted some seeds. I save seeds from um, anything that's open pollinated. I'll try to save the seeds from it. Because, you know, I like that history. Plus, it's economics. You know, it's, it's, it's inexpensive to save seeds. Like, I bought borage seeds a couple of years ago. And borage is great for the bees. They love it. It makes an unusual plant. It makes a really pretty little blue flower that's edible. Um... You can sugar it and put it on, you know, cakes and stuff. It's really beautiful. But I save the seeds from it because since it's open pollinated, it'll come back true from seed every year. And I like that history. I like the history of passing those things along. My grandmother always saved seeds. And that's back when the pill bottles used to be glass. And she'd have these little glass bottles with little slips of paper with her writing on them in there about what seed that was. Um, there is a great documentary that was actually done by a professor that used to work at the university where I work now called Seed Swap. And it is, talks about these, these seeds that have been passed down through generations and generations and generations of family members in the Ozark Mountains. And so it's a really great watch. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and link that for you because I think that is something to me that is very important you know that's just as important as preserving our history that is our our plant history that is our history of growing and things like that so seed saving to me is something that's really important um but i planted my borage i planted some seeds that i had saved from some uh, coleus and from sunflowers and then i've also got some seeds that i saved from some okra and some um, squash that I grew. So I'm going to plant those probably tomorrow or Friday. My former student, Jacob, is coming out to help me on Friday. So I may get him to, to do some odd jobs around here. Then I can go outside and work on my planting stuff, which would be very, very exciting. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where we're at here on the farm. Uh, the animals are doing, are doing well. Simon got a little bit sick. My black cat got a little bit sick. Uh, when I adopted him and his brother from the, um, Humane Society, they had told me he has uh, a respiratory issue that he will have his whole life. It's chronic. You know, it's the one that makes kittens eyes matter up and stuff like that. Well, luckily you can actually give them lysine, which is a, a, supplement I don't think it's considered a vitamin but it's considered a supplement and you can purchase it in uh, any vitamin department of any store and I grind it up and put it in their food or their water and it seems to keep that knocked down so um, he started acting a little off of his feet a little bit and so I gave him some lysine and kind of babied him for a few days and he's doing much much better uh, daffodil was a little sick last night my little dog my little ditch doggy sweet puppy that she is and um, she ate a sponge she puked it back up, thankfully, because I was like, please don't get that in your intestines. Uh, she ate a part of a sponge. So she had, she got a little bit sick last night, but luckily she um, threw it up and, and moved on with her with moved on with her day. Um, everybody else seems to be doing really well. Uh, the horses and the donkeys and the cattle and are enjoying all the grass. And uh, today is my, my good friend who is also my horse vet's birthday. So shout out to Dr. Angel on her birthday. Um, I, I sent her a picture as I was walking down the road yesterday. Chips and Trixie and Pumpkin came up to the fence while I was picking flowers and I petted them for a little bit. Uh, it's definitely spring going into summer now. We're starting to get some pretty warm days and, and things are, are bursting forth with life. It's wonderful. I was standing out in the garden the other day and it was just... You can just, the earth is just vibrating. It's so alive right now, and I love that. 
So anyway, yeah, so that's kind of what's going on on the farm. So we'll come back and wrap up with some final thoughts. Okay, so to kind of wrap up, apparently today is Teacher Appreciation Day. I had a couple of uh, messages from people thanking me. And I have a lot of people in my life who have taught me things, whether it's actual traditional teachers or it's been mentors or it's been just friends that I know that know cool stuff. I'm grateful for everybody that has taught me things along the way in my life. I love to learn new things. And so I always value people who are willing to share their knowledge. Um, I was thinking as, as I was getting ready to record about the people in my life who sort of set my feet on this path. And, you know, the number one person that I would have to say would be my mom. You know, we grew up extremely poor. I mean, without my grandparents' help, we probably would have been homeless. Um, but my mother always found a way for there to be money for books. You know, um... I don't know if you, those of you who remember book orders, you used to do book orders in elementary school. One of the things I remember my mom getting me was at the grocery store, you know, they have those stands set up. I don't know that they do this anymore. Now it's candy and junk like that. But they used to have the little golden book section or box display. And there was the little golden book of astronomy. It was not little. It was kind of a workbook size. And then there was one about rocks and minerals. And she bought me both of those when I was about six years old. And I was hooked. That I was fascinated from the word go. I had, you know, I had studied about stars. I started writing out my own constellations and making up my own myths. And I went around and took my grandma's upholstery hammer and my dad's nail apron and made myself a rock hounding kit. <laughs> you know, there was always a way to get books. And then, of course, in the summertime, we would get to go to the library, which was awesome. You know, we had to go to town to do laundry and... Uh, so we the laundromat luckily was just around the corner from the library So we got to go to the library and check out books. So there was always books around um, and, and I definitely think that that is what opened my mind up and opened my Desire up to, to know and to learn and to be curious um, There have definitely been other people in my life who have motivated me You know, I couldn't if I go through and try to name them all, I'm sure I will forget. But but some of the motivation has come in unexpected places. You know, uh, definitely, you know, music and art, even though they're not necessarily directly part of my life, have always influenced my way of thinking. So my high school band director and my high school art teacher, Mr. Clement, Miss Donaldson, definitely had a huge influence on my life, as did Miss Pickle, my junior high school science teacher. And of course, Mrs. Hayes, I've mentioned several times, she is still a friend of mine and she is definitely teaching me things every day about town history and about, um, you know, beautiful old vintage items. You know, not only did she teach me, did she teach me about English and how to diagram a sentence, she's still teaching me today. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, you know, I've mentioned a couple of times in passing my PhD advisor, Dr. Cowan. I wouldn't be here without him. You know, he is the reason I am Dr. Burris. And the day that he came out of that room, you know, when you go to defend your PhD, or at least when I did it, you know, you prepare a big presentation. And my mom and dad were there, and it was really cool. Um, and then the you do your presentation, and then the public that's collected there can ask questions. And then they send all of them out of the room and it's just you and your PhD committee and they ask you questions. <laughs> and that's a little lot more nerve wracking. And then they send you out of the room and then they talk about you. <laughs> and standing out in that hallway waiting is the longest period of time of your life. Um, I made the joke to my dad that it was worse than waiting on the results of a pregnancy test and I embarrassed the fire out of him. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> But anyway, so you're standing out there, you can hear him in there talking, and they'll laugh every once in a while, and you're like, oh, God. And when he finally opened that door and stuck his hand out and said, congratulations, Dr. Burris, I was just over the moon. And I'm so tickled that my folks got to see it, you know. Um, so definitely, he's been a huge influence on my life uh, as well. And... But, you know, there's other people. There's people in my life who teach me things every day. You know, I've learned so much about horses from, you know, people in my life, like my friend Carol and Marianne and then Shannon. 
Um, they teach me things about horses all the time, and, and I hope I can pass those on to the, the kids that I try to, to teach. Um, you know, my friend Sasha teaches me wonderful things about the state of Arkansas and about the Cherokee Nation and about how to make baskets and things like that. So there are all kinds of teachers in our lives. It's not just the traditional classroom teachers. And I think every now and then it's nice to give them a, like I said last week, a pat on the head, even a mule likes a pat on the head sometimes. So sometimes a really, a really serendipitously timed thank you can make a person's day more than you'll ever know. So anyway, so that's kind of all I've got for this week. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm glad that you're here. I'm tickled that you hung out with me and visited with me for this period of time. Uh, do check out our charity Make Along. Uh, go follow my farm on Facebook or follow me on Instagram to kind of see what I've got going on. Uh, do share the podcast if you think it's somebody that you know would enjoy it. I appreciate the people that have that have, you know, have shared it and, and given me nice comments and things like that. That really lifts my soul up. And so I appreciate y'all very much. So I hope you're meeting your crafting goals. And until I see y'all again, be good to each other. Take care of each other. And peace out. Bye.